Hi there, this is David and welcome to the Top 10 Worst Dungeons PSP Edition. I'll be the first to admit that I was late to the game with regards to the PSP. I was all in with the DS, but I had my reservations when it came to Sony's first handheld. The first time I ever saw a PSP was when I was teaching high school and a student was playing it between classes. I admired the graphics before quickly and sternly telling him to put it away before I confiscated it. Years later, when I made my cross-country road trip from Georgia to Nevada, I brought the PSP to accompany me over the long, lonely nights in the hotel rooms, and boy am I glad that I did. There are a lot of ports on the system, but there's also some definite hidden gems from obscure developers. And as I combed through these, I came across some pretty horrendous dungeons. So without further ado, let's get started. Number 10. The Legend of Heroes Prophecy of the Moonlight Witch, Hawk Talon. This isn't exactly a dungeon, but it might as well be. It's just as annoying, frustrating, and long. Only in a completely different way. It's just the worst. Not that it's hard. In fact, there's no battles at all. It's just because it's so damn boring. You'll be on this stupid boat for an hour, at least. Easily more if you don't know exactly what to do. Basically, you have to run back and forth doing fetch quests or talking to specific NPCs in a specific order to trigger the next event. And in a game already known for its slow pace, it seriously grinds to a glacial halt here. It's no wonder many people have never completed this game. It's enough to put you to sleep. Number 9. Wild Arms XF, Creedmoor Prison. Its stage isn't hard in the traditional sense, it's just painfully annoying and tedious. Similar to the Hawk Talon, there's no fighting to be had whatsoever. However, it's still easily the worst stage in the game. Coming very early on, it's one of those don't get caught in the guards line of sight stages. So you're avoiding the guards while also freeing prisoners being held in huts all over the map. And if one of your guys gets caught, it's game over. Start again. Even the most absolute efficient route using the best job for each character will still take you at least a half an hour. Then after this, you enter part two, where you have to protect each and every one of those villagers from an onslaught of foes. It's infuriating. Also, did I mention that this is only the fourth stage in the entire game? It's like Daughter Trade City all over again. Number eight. Prolancer Wayfarer of Time, Saving Magnus and Pamela. Ugh, there are so many missions to choose from here. All of those capture the flag type missions, they're horrendous. And the whole crossing the bridge while being bombarded by spellcasters ones, they're no fun at all either. But then there's this stupid rescue mission, easily the worst rescue mission of the bunch. And what's worse than rescuing one person in a strategy RPG? Well, Rescuing two, of course, and they're surrounded by huge monsters hiding in the bushes capable of one-shotting them right from the get-go. And to make matters worse, you not only have to rescue them, but then kill that bitch Malene who's casting spells against them the entire time too. By the time that I got to Pamela and Magnus, I wanted to kill them myself. Number 7. Tales of Eternia, Forest of Temptation. What I wouldn't give for a map of this place or at least some semblance of a clue as how to beat it. You're let loose in this horridly mazy forest with no idea what you're supposed to do to get through it. You stumble around, finding four statues, each facing different directions, and you have to magically somehow know to turn each statue different directions in order to actually move on. Every single screen looks exactly the same, so you'll get lost very easily without creating your own map. On top of all this, there are ghosts haunting the forest who will grab you and drain your HP in addition to the already insane random encounter rate. What sadist thought that this was a good idea? Number 6. Monster Kingdom Jewel Summoner, The Monolith This place is an absolutely enormous maze, and like the aforementioned forest, everything looks exactly the same. When will developers learn? that it's almost impossible to navigate a maze when every single room and hallway look identical. To make going through here even worse, there are switches that you must press in order to open up new paths, and you have to stop every five seconds to use your out-of-battle abilities to progress. Going through here is just a painstaking chore. 
Each hallway is too long and too circuitous. You're forever running in loops to get all the treasures, hit all the switches, and by the end, you just want it to be over. Thank god you can fast forward the battles, cause otherwise this would just be excruciating. Number 5. Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, The Auroral. The dubious tradition of Trails games having never-ending, painfully long final dungeons all began here. It's as if the developers are punishing you for seeing the game all the way through. It's like, oh, you've invested 100 hours into our world and you're emotionally attached to our characters too? Well, screw you. You have to go through the worst dungeon ever to find out what happens at the end. The place is filled to the brim with incredibly annoying enemies that have astronomical physical defense, so you're forced to cast magic against them. But then they're just going to cancel your arts and deal massive damage to your entire group. They're such a pain in the ass, every single fight takes like 5 minutes. And in a true bastard move, you have to fight them every single time you open up a chest worth anything because all the chests worth their salt are trapped. Every single final weapon, armor piece, accessory, or quartz are locked behind trapped chests. It just grinds the game to a halt and makes you think, is it really worth it? Should I keep going? Well, for anybody who's ever seen the ending of the game, the answer is unequivocally, yes. Number 4. Tactics Ogre – The Rescue Missions Tactics Ogre still has one of the best stories I've seen in a long time. The characters are great. The game plays fast, fluid, and engaging. The atmosphere of the game, its lore and world, they're very interesting. Plus, it brings in a lot of great mechanics that make it a fresh experience. But, I'm really tired of having to save brain-dead, frail NPCs from themselves. Yeah, I know it's a strategy game, and I know it's supposed to be challenging, but it shouldn't require you to have to constantly reload your save because some idiot ran away from you right into the enemy's line of fire on the very first round before you could even act. It's just plain ridiculous and it happens far too often in this game. The lengths that you have to go to in order to rescue these suicidal morons is ridiculous. Sometimes you even have to strip all your characters naked so that the enemy AI will target them instead. It's downright insane. Number 3. Mimana ER Chronicles Forest of Souls they call this place a forest, but all you're really doing is crossing bridges over water. I guess it's a translation thing. Anyway, this dungeon's just the pits. Your characters even joke that you'll be in here for days. As usual, the paths all look the same. I guess these game designers all went to the same school of copy and paste. The bridges are extremely long, leading to tons of encounters, and they're constantly forking. It's so easy to get lost. So. Have fun making your own map! Add to that, the goal of the dungeon, which is to activate four seals in order to remove the barrier around the boss. To make this even more fun, you have one-way teleporters to deal with which warp you between the two elevations. Also, just a note, later on if you choose to pursue Patty and do her side quest, you have to come back here, so no one in their right mind should ever do that. Number 2. The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Azure, The Azure Tree. What a never-ending hell this was. Continuing the tradition of final dungeons and trails games that just go on forever, here we're greeted with a main hub dungeon with four more additional fully fleshed out dungeons to go through here, each complete with their own puzzle mechanic and boss fight at the end. For those counting, this place is actually five Long dungeons all wrapped up into one. Then when you think you're finished, there's an elevator that takes you back to the start so you can heal up. Only it's bugged, and has the possibility of crashing your game after all that work. It's such a shame that they do this because after spending 120 hours in the story, you just want it to be done. But Falcom instead bitch slaps you with this hard place. And finally, number one, Persona, the Snow Queen quest. Yeah. I know this is a remake of a PS1 game, but the previously cut content has now been added back in, and that's what I want to focus on here, this horrid, HORRID Snow Queen quest. There are three featureless labyrinthine towers to complete here with no save points and no shops whatsoever inside. Once you set foot inside of one of these towers, you cannot leave until it's complete. The Thanatos Tower is the worst of the bunch though. 
Not only is there a three hour time limit to complete the thing, but if one of your characters dies in there, they lose their persona, so you have to go all the way back to the second floor to reactivate it. There's just this feeling of dread hanging over the entire quest. I mean, this is a Shin Megami Tensei game, so it's not exactly easy, and one wrong move could cost you hours of progress. There's not even a save at the top of the tower before the painfully hard boss fight. The entire experience is just a migraine-inducing, stressful nightmare. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.